Hey, what's up guys? Today's video is about how to use the gradient tool inside Adobe Illustrator. I'm Kent and this is Diagraphics. So when working with gradients, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we have our gradient panel open. If your gradient panel isn't open, you can go to Window and select your gradient panel right here. Next, we want to draw or select the shape that we want our gradient for. Then go down to the gradient panel and click where it says click to activate. And as we can see, the gradient has now been activated. But to get some more control over our gradient, we also want to select the gradient tool. When you select the gradient tool, this bar right here will pop up. This bar makes it way easier to manipulate and move the gradient to exactly what you want. If you just click and drag, you can drag the gradient around. And if you grab the other side of the bar, you can manipulate the size of the gradient. You can also rotate it with free hand from here. The small sliders on the bar will dictate the starting point and the end point of the transition. You can move these around exactly as you want. So because this arrow is the starting point of the gradient, everything to the left of the arrow will be the exact same color as the arrow. And the same goes for the end point. Everything to the right of the end point will be the exact same color as the end point. And with this small square on the top of the slider, you can manipulate the transition between the two arrows. So now let's choose some colors for the gradient. For this, go down to the gradient panel. Now click on the color slider that you want to change. And from here, you can either double click the fill and select whatever color you like, or you can go to your swatches and drag a swatch down to the gradient slider. Now choose a color for the other slider as well. If you want to add even more colors to your gradient, you can just click next to these gradient sliders to add another slider. From here you can give this one a color too. And as you can see, you can create some really crazy gradients this way. And from here you can move the colors or the transitions exactly the same way as on the bar right here. If you want to remove a color, you can just grab it and drag it away from the slider. Now the gradient panel has a few options. The first one is which type of gradient you want. You can choose between linear or radial gradient. For now let's choose linear and for now we will skip the stroke menu, I will come back to that later. So let's go down to the angle. From here you can select the exact angle you want your gradient to have. You can either type it in right here or you can select it from the drop down menu. Aspect ratio is only for the radial gradient, so we will get back to that later. Now go down to opacity. From here we can set the colors to be opaque. So if I choose the light blue and set the opacity to 50%, the transition will go from a solid dark blue, as we chose for this gradient slider, and transition gradually to an opaque light blue color. The location menu will dictate where your gradient slider will be located on this bar right here. So 50% will be in the exact middle, and it will keep the middle position, no matter if you shrink or enlarge the slider. And of course, 100% will be all the way to the right. So as you see, it now says 100%. This button right here, will simply reverse the gradients, like this. So now, let's choose the radial gradient. So where the linear gradient creates like a wall of gradient, the radial gradient transitions from the middle of the circle and all the way outside to the edge of the circle. Now if you don't want a perfect circle, you can grab this handle right here to make an ellipse. Or you can go down to aspect ratio and select the exact size you want. 50% means that the vertical distance is only 50% or half of the horizontal distance. And right here, you can shrink the circle. Now for the opacity and the location, it's the exact same as before. Now if you want the stroke to have a gradient too, you can select the stroke right here and select which type of gradient you want for your stroke. Let's choose linear. Now let's make the stroke a little wider so we can see what happens. From here you can create a gradient for your stroke independent of the fill gradient. This means you can select separate colors for the stroke and select how you want the gradient to be applied for your stroke in the stroke menu. 